Hi guys, happy Friday again. Um, it's about 1.45 at night again, which I think is exactly what time I got up last week to make a video. So anyway, I've got so many amazing questions this week from you guys. I'm really, really excited because I don't know what it is that you want to talk about after reading the book. So the more questions you can send me, the more videos I can start making and uh, get you guys on track with um, exactly what you want to learn about. So um, this week we're going to talk about um, basically hearing I am yourself. So, um, the questions I've gotten, I've gotten quite a few about, um, how do you recognize that voice, right? What is the voice? And I want to make it really, really clear. This voice is not something outside of you, right? It's something that's always been there. You just haven't recognized it. You've been programmed since, uh, since you were a very young child to believe that, your your persona is your voice so the voice of your dreams is a great way to describe i am especially in the beginning when you're just learning to listen to it so i say all this so you understand it's not a voice that has a different sound it's not going to sound like for for me um i, I don't even want to say the voice in my head is is male or female because it's it's not it doesn't sound like my talking voice when I hear it in my head. You know, it's, it's your thinking voice, whatever voice, whatever, however it sounds in your head when you're thinking, you're going to have the exact same sound when you hear I am, because you are I am. So you've just created you and, and your parents and all the people around you have created this persona and both voices sound the same their words are different, right? Your persona has all of your doubts and fears. And I am has all of your big dreams. I am believes anything is possible because of course I am understands that we are unlimited creators and that anytime we start thinking with limits, we're no longer hearing I am's voice. So we all have big dreams. But over time, our persona gets bigger and bigger and bigger and silences those dreams and makes us doubt them. So some of you have written in and said that you, um, you, you think that you hear I am, but then the doubts kick in. And you want to know if I've ever experienced this absolutely all you have to do is look at chapter eight in uh one truth one law to see that of course i have doubts too and i still have doubts well my my doubts are a little different than they were at the beginning of my journey at the beginning of my journey i doubted whether or not i am was real and after a few years of speaking with i am and actually having experienced experienced oneness, um, which we can talk about in another video, but my experience of oneness erased all my doubts about whether or not I am was real, but that didn't erase all my doubts about whether or not it made sense for me to follow I am's guidance, whether or not I thought I am might be a little bit nuts. I was no longer believing I was nuts for hearing I am, although I did believe the people I loved might believe that. So I was afraid to share what was happening to me, but I was absolutely and still am. When I get guidance from I am, often I want to say, I am, you're crazy. That would never work, right? Because I'm still Aaron. I'm still retaining my humanity, but the truth of the matter is we are absolutely unlimited creators and any of those big, crazy, huge dreams I am can dream up and tell you about and you start doubting, they're absolutely 100% possible. But another thing that some of you have written in and said is that 
you haven't felt any huge shifts after beginning your conversation with I am. And I'm here to tell you that this whole spiritual awakening sort of movement that's happening right now has a lot of really exciting parts to it. It's, it's so thrilling, right? Everybody's awakening to the fact that there's more going on in the universe. But at the same time, there's a lot of not understanding how absolutely blessed we are to have these human lives. And there's a lot of when you first start awakening, like when I first started awakening in 2011, I thought, well, oh my goodness, I hear the voice of God or the universe in, in my head. So surely my life is going to shift or change in a dramatic way. And granted, I did not start following I am's directions to the letter back in 2011. Uh, I had too many doubts and too many fears to do that. But the truth of the matter about spiritual awakening is, is the beginning is an incredibly scary time. The more you awaken, the scarier it is. Because everything that you thought you understood or knew about the world is being ripped out from under you. And you're also finding that this idea that is sold that um, by so many in, in the spiritual awakening movement that once you awaken, your life is going to become incredibly easy is actually not true. That's based on a lot of myths and misconceptions um, that, that I hope to discuss in the future. But anyway, the point is, is that this great shift is not really the goal. It's not really what's supposed to happen. When you understand the truth, the world does not change, okay? Because this world is a projection and we're all projecting simultaneously. So you're not the only creator of your reality. Everyone around you is still creating your reality. So to expect a huge shift, like so many people out there are selling, it's a misconception and it's not realistic. I will be 100% honest with you. The only way you are going to make huge shifts or changes in your life is to figure out what your blueprint is and dig in and do the work to make it happen. And I will be honest with you, when I started to understand that I was going to have to get over my fears around telling the people in my life that I was listening to a voice in my head, that um, more specifically the voice of God, uh, I thought that if I could just put this book out there and tell those people, then that would be it. I would have arrived at at happy land, right? And then everything would be great. And I found that that's, that's not the case. Life, life goes on. And then there are more challenges. And, you know, enlightenment is sort of like a mountain. And with every fear you overcome, more fears pop up, but they're easier to overcome because you overcame the first fear already. And that's really what I'm finding. And it's what I hope that, that you start taking action towards and finding as well. Um, so when I, when I told my, my family, uh, you know, of course, besides Phil, that uh, I was listening to God's voice in my head, it was the, the biggest fear, basically, that I had ever overcome in my life. And since then, I've done quite a few podcasts. And I'll tell you, the first time I did a podcast, I thought I was going to throw up and my head was actually in the toilet beforehand because I'm very much an introvert. I am very, very much not at all outgoing or, or wanting to put myself out there. It's more like I understand that this is my life path. And if I don't do it, I won't become fulfilled. And I'm getting better at it here. I'm talking to you on video. Hello. <laughs> but 
so the podcast, I was able to start doing those, even though it terrified me because I had already overcome my biggest fear. And now I'm just knocking these fears down. I'm they're like bowling pins and I'm just knocking them down. And because I overcame that first one, I understand that none of these fears have any more power than I give them. But it's so important to see your, your life as a, a life path, not as I said in the last video, a day path, a month path or a year path, because you're never going to get there. The only way to get to enlightenment, like zoom to the top of the enlightenment mountain and, and actually transcend it is to, um, to basically detach completely from reality. And you detach completely from reality like many monks do. You basically, and when I was first talking to I am, um, I, I understood this inherently that my, my options were either to be human or to uh, detach from reality by basically going off in the woods or, or somewhere where there's no society, there's no other people, and being by myself for a long period of time, probably at least a month, if not significantly longer. And, um, and I certainly, I don't want to compare this to the, the journey of Jesus all, but very much sort of like that. And I know Gandhi did something similar, Buddha did something similar, um, and they made the choice to do that. But I very consciously made the choice not to do that because I did not want to detach from my relationship with Phil. And I'm so glad that I've made that decision to remain human because I understand fully now that yes, you may detach from reality and get enlightenment quickly, but it means that you don't have any material uh, desires beyond basically food and water. If you look at monks, they live in basically what most of us would consider like a jail cell, right? They live with a, with a bed, a blanket, um, and not much else in their rooms. You know, they don't have any material desires. And that's, not the reason most of us came here. And I say that with so much conviction, and I'll tell you why. Because I am has explained to me recently that um, the one limitation I am has as an unlimited creator is I am has no ability to connect with another unless I am creates this physical world. Because I am as oneness, that's all that exists. So before the physical world was created, there was nothing for I am to connect with and to experience with and to love with. Because I am was everything. That is literally the reason this physical world was created. So that I am could have the veil of the persona and connect and find love with others. So we are here to do basically like the most blessed, the most amazing thing, experience the connection of love with others. And there's so many other awesome experiences we get to have while we're here. But if we choose to transcend the, the enlightenment mountain basically and detach from reality completely, we miss out on all those wonderful connections. And having experienced oneness, I can tell you with 100% conviction and certainty that when you die, you will be one with the oneness again. And so there's absolutely no reason to transcend the enlightenment mountain in this lifetime because you are guaranteed to be I am when you die. So while you're here, it is absolutely your privilege to experience your humanity, live life as a human and a human has struggles that they overcome and that's okay it doesn't mean there's anything wrong it means you've decided to participate in basically this game of life that you knew when you were i am and you just chose to come down into this body you knew you'd be coming down to participate in this and in the beginning of spiritual enlightenment most people think it's their job and i i was the same way in the beginning it's their job to detach from reality and get out of this game basically transcend the mountain but 
after nine years of conversations with IM, I understand very, very clearly that is absolutely not the purpose. And um, most of the information out there on spiritual enlightenment is going to lead you astray. It's going to make you want to detach from reality, but you do not want to detach from reality. And I'll tell you why, because right now you're human and I know that you want stuff. You want love. You want connection. You want a nicer life than you have now, whatever that means to you in terms of material things. And it's okay to want material things. Most of the spiritual leaders out there right now are saying that, no, you don't want these material things while they have them. So, you know, any spiritual leader that is telling you to detach from reality while they have nice things, do not trust them. And I hate to put that out there like that, but it's literally the truth. They are not living what they are speaking. If they're telling you to detach from reality, they should have no relationships themselves because if you are living that detached life you do not have any close personal relationships if you are living as i am with no persona you have love for all so it's not you're not capable of zeroing in and loving one thing specifically um as opposed to all so anyway, this has been a really long video and I can't even remember what I started talking about now. <laughs> so um, please send me your questions. And I know that I, I promised um, someone that I would do a video this weekend on um, discharging emotions. So I'm definitely going to do that. Um, whatever I didn't cover in this video, you know, send me questions. I'm sorry. It's, it's 2.05 now in the morning. So I did my best and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.